All right, sorry, I got cut off and they didn't tell me I was going to get cut off. So um, finishing up the final film vocab or different, you know, film techniques if you are going to go in movie direction. So once again, zoom. So zoom is like when I walked up to the elevator or walked backward from the elevator. It allows you to kind of move in and get closer to whatever you want to focus in on. So you could play with that. Like if you're going to do the plums, you might zoom in on the plums because they're important. Tilt is also important because you could have the camera move up and down. So instead of right to left, you might go um, up and down to kind of show something important happening. Or maybe somebody's standing or maybe you're trying to show the full picture of something. So the camera, it just, you know, you use your wrist and kind of move it up and down. And then finally, there's lighting. So think about this when you take your um, footage, you know, during the daytime versus the nighttime, or if you turn on a light or create some shadows. High key lighting tends to show good, happy situations going on. It helps establish the mood and tone. Um, so like Wizard of Oz tends to be very high key, very bright lighting. If you're trying to get something that's a little bit more menacing or moody, I would recommend doing some stuff with low key lighting. You can also do this with filters and stuff like that when you start to edit on programs like iMovie. This creates suspense and suspicion. Um, you could also do what's called bottom side lighting, where you take a lamp or some type of light source and you put it off to the side so it creates a shadow, like a split personality. So this is from um, Schindler's List, which I know we didn't get to watch, but what happens is he's a Nazi, so he's got some dark shadows on him, but he's also helping Jewish people, so he's light. Um, this is for Shutter's Island, and he has a split personality situation, so that makes sense. Um, so I'd like you to pause and pause the video here in a second, but what are some film devices that you found interesting, new, or important? Even if you're not doing film, you should have taken some notes, and I want you to kind of think about what makes film a piece of literature. I know it's a little bit different than poetry, but it still tells a story. And it's still something that's been used in fiction, memoir, and other things that we've explored this unit, or this year, rather. Um, so talk to a shoulder buddy real quick, and then we will continue on with some photography ideas. All right, welcome back. So photography, this is a slideshow that one of my student teachers made for me. So it's an old slideshow that's connected to a different lesson. Um, but if you plan to do photos, like I did, you're going to want to think about how you put those photos together. So for instance, um, of course it's not on this one, let me find it. Like I decided I wanted to do something nostalgic, so I found old photos that represented it. But I could also stage some photos too, you know, if I had a chance to go back to that big mansion, I might take a better picture than the one that was in my slideshow, um, which I stole off of Zillow. But I made the picture big. I like that this picture is kind of up here. It makes me look a little bit smaller because I'm young. So if you are going to do an auditory read, I would issue the challenge that you go and find and make your own pictures that would best match up to your poetic reading. So this is what this slide shows about. So first is when it comes to good photos, you sometimes use what's called the rule of thirds. So if you notice, one third of this picture is taking up um, the main imagery with the buildings. So you want to think about that. So like if you're going to do a picture of a mirror, because um, you're going to read Sylvia Plath's, maybe you use a mirror off to the side because it just creates interesting composition. Um, the next thing is Cameras work great on phones, and there's filters, and there's a whole bunch of stuff, so you don't need expensive cameras to take good photos. And that's why I would issue, maybe you try to make some new photos for this project. Um, leading lines is kind of a cool strategy when you take photos. So what happens is you kind of create natural lines. So for instance, the hands right here create natural lines to create a focus. Like I could see this could be really cool with plums, right? Like putting the plum right here to kind of create natural leading lines to a specific point of interest. Um, a vantage point is kind of like the point of view shots I talked about. So if you notice, this camera is down low. It's almost like taking on the persona or point of view of the objects as opposed to somebody taking a distant shot. So that's kind of a cool um, strategy depending on who your poem's about, especially if your poem is um, like from the new point of view or new persona um, strategy that we did earlier with Mir. 
framing, you know, think about what you want in the frame. This goes back to the film devices where you take your hands and make a frame. What do you want in the picture frame? Um, sometimes you'll have natural spacing that will help create that frame for you. Contrast is really cool because you guys can play that up with um, different filters and stuff like that where you emphasize light versus dark. So this one, um, you can kind of read through the you know information that the student teacher provided, but it does do a nice job kind of showing contrast as a photo album. Um, the orienta orientation of the camera, just like the film stuff, you got to ask yourself, do you want it in landscape or do you want it in portrait? You have a little bit more flexibility um, with photos because portraits do create more um, like a st statuesque kind of a feel. It's definitely something that's used for people or figures versus I would argue landscape is more for setting depictions. Patterns and repetition could be cool too, like looking for those natural patterns. Like I think about the patterning of the uh, lockers when I'm in the hallway. And that could be a fascinating picture that might bear relevance to a poem. Um, nature and spring has got some good patterns too. If you want to think about balance, this is kind of the alternative to the rule of thirds where you have more symmetry, like this is perfectly centered. You want to ask yourself, what story does the picture tell? Because that's going to help reinforce whatever your poetry reading is, okay? Just like I use that picture of me when I'm young and innocent. Um, and then also the picture of my old house. Definitely find some good photography practices in the pictures you already have and which ones could be really powerful to reinforce your poetic reading. Um, so I see some cool things here. I like the color contrast. The bridge creates some nice leading lines. I like that we don't get to see this person's face, so it kind of creates mystery. Um, this one is cute because it's a portrait. You can see, I feel like they might have done um, some filtering in the back and then the contrast of the white versus the uh, flowers. And then ultimately the rest of this is just resources from the old PowerPoint. But right here, like... I had a lot of kid pictures, and I chose this one because I liked the way the camera was from the bottom. And if I had time, I would have gotten better, like a better photo of my old home, um, just to kind of reiterate my lesson. So, tons of stuff going on in this slideshow. I am hoping um, you guys have some new ideas, whether it's for the photos, or whether it's because you're going to play with some auditory reading, or actual video creation. Um, so I will leave you with this goal. Maybe storyboard out a film or maybe create some new visuals to help complement. Um, that's basically the agenda for today. And I don't have any more direct lessons going on for the rest of the week. So I know today was a little bit long, especially via video, but I'm hoping this gives you some ideas to plan out your presentations. And I hope to be back tomorrow. So take care. Bye.